What's up everybody? I'm Matt. And I'm Beth. And today we're reviewing the interior in the 2021 Kia Seltos. So this is one of the first 21 model year vehicles. Kia got a little bit of an early start here on this, uh, but it's a, a very cool little car. And uh, I did a full driving review already. You can go check that out if you want to hear my thoughts on how it drives. But as far as the interior, um, I think it's a, a pretty nice place to be. Now this one, strangely, usually these press vehicles that manufacturers send us are pretty fully loaded. This one is actually a pretty bare bones model. So it gives you a good idea of what a pretty basic Seltos is going to look like. And so this is the S turbo trim. So it does have the faster engine, but has the lower interior. Now, if you want a nicer interior, the way you get that is to go for the EX or the SX trims. Those give you nicer features and stuff. But I think the design and stuff, it's all functional, pretty straightforward with its layout and uh, looks good. There are a few odd things there, like we pointed out this uh, whole dash thing, which has this different color to it. and. Uh, at first, I thought it looked silver at first glance. It's definitely blue. <laughs> yeah. I would say it's definitely blue. However, if it had more of a blue tint to it, I think that it would look a little bit better. Because right now it just like looks like it's like an off color that's not supposed to be there. Like they accidentally put it there. I don't know. It just like... I'm not in love with it. it well, yeah, because there's like not really anywhere else that it ties into. You have you know just that one thing that's blue, and it's like the outside of this car is orange, so that's kind of an odd combo. But then I, I did realize it is supposed to be blue because you have the blue stitching here on the shifter and on the doors and stuff. So, and on the armrest, yeah, so it is supposed to be blue, but it's kind of an odd choice. I do like the color in interiors. I think having that be black or something would have been more boring. Uh, it's just an interesting choice of color, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I just think, I wish they would have like gone like a little bit more of a blue tint so you would have actually known what it is because with the black around it, it kind of, it doesn't blend in, but it just kind of makes it look not that great. I don't know. Yeah. It would be cool if they maybe match the body color on the outside, like how Fiat or Volkswagen does with the yeah. Beetle and stuff. Like something like that would have been cooler. This just was a little odd. Anyway, um, first thing, sitting down in these seats here in the Seltos. Again, these are the base uh, cloth seats you get here. Although I think they are slightly nicer here for these turbo versions because you do have the leather-like material on the sides but then cloth in the middle. They are heated seats, which is nice. If you go up to the SX or the ES, you do get heated and cooled seats. But uh, they actually uh, have a really nice uh, design to them. The shape is really good. It holds you in corners pretty well. They are manually adjustable seats. Again, that's something you got to go up to the higher trims to get the power adjustments but uh, I don't have any complaints with the seats overall I mean were they okay for you too yeah they were okay they weren't like amazing but they were good yeah yeah next is the steering wheel here though in the Celtis which is the same as what you get in like the Forte and uh, several other Kia models and it's a really great wheel it has a nice 9 and 3 grip nice little 10 and 2 notches um, it's actually leather wrapped here that is one thing you do get with the S in the turbo trims here um, and then you have just a few buttons here on the steering wheel and uh, you know just a few little switches that look like metal but are just plastic but it's nice to give a little bit of a nicer look and uh, overall no complaints there gauges are also simple but uh, you know they get the job done here in the Celtos. Just clear analog dials, a very basic uh, black and white display there in the middle for your basic, you know, it'll show you a digital speedometer and, you know, your tire pressure and, uh, you know, trip information, but it doesn't show you anything like your radio settings or, you know, any kind of, you know, advanced stuff. Now that is, again, because this is the base gauge cluster. If you go up to those nicer versions, you do get a little bit of a larger screen there in the middle that will show you more information. Um, but anyway, you know, still, again, they're fine gauges, just uh, nothing special. Coming over to the center of the dashboard here, right up top you have this 8 inch touchscreen infotainment system which is standard in all Celtos models so you don't get some tiny thing like some of the competition offers in their base models. It still is a nice screen. It has standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto even in the base model which is again something not everyone offers and uh, it's pretty simple and straightforward. You know it just you know has the basic radio controls. Now it doesn't have satellite radio strangely enough. Um, it's not even an option here in this version so I think you again have to go up to that higher screen in order to get satellite radio. Uh, but Bluetooth audio streaming and all that works pretty well. Um, but if you do go for the EX or the SX trims, then you're going to get uh, Kia's new widescreen 10.3 inch display. And I actually reviewed that in the Kia Soul Turbo last year. So you can go check that out if you want to hear my thoughts on that screen. But it's uh, a much nicer screen. So all the signs are pointing towards go for that EX trim or the SX. The SX, if you want the turbo, is kind of pricey. It's about $29,000 um, versus the EX. If you're a 
okay with the slower motor, but it doesn't have the turbo, um, you get one of those for about 25 or so. So a little bit more reasonable there for those. Um, but yeah, and also the stereo here, it's just the standard bass stereo in this Celtos. You can get an optional Bose 8 speaker stereo, which I have not tried, but I'm assuming it's a nice upgrade because even this standard six speaker system in the standard bass Celtos sounded actually pretty good to me. I was kind of surprised at just how good it sounded. But one thing I did notice while opening the door was something that I was very concerned with. <laughs> the speaker at the top by the door handle is looks like it's dented and it's not actually dented that's how it's supposed to look if you look down a little bit further you can see that they made it look just a little bit funky probably just for style purposes but when you look at the top it looks like somebody literally punched your speaker <laughs> and I don't know. I think maybe they should have just gone with a flat speaker on top and maybe had the fun design down on the bottom. And I know they were trying to be cohesive and everything, but at the same time, I just think that it literally looks like someone got real mad and punched the speaker. <laughs> I just, I, I don't like it. Yeah, well, and it's kind of also strange because it doesn't fit in with other parts of the interior. It's like another thing, it's just like, hey, this looks cool, let's throw this in. Same with this blue trim. It's like, it, it's not cohesive. And so, you know, you have random blue trim, it doesn't connect with anything else. You have these speaker grills, which have this funky pattern, but the pattern isn't reflected on anything else. Like if they had the same pattern for this dash, you know, panel or somewhere else on this car to kind of tie it together. Yeah, they could have tied it in with like the seats, but the seats don't really look like Yeah, like the stitching like on the seats could have been the same. Right, something. exactly, and it just is, kind of like oh this looks fun let's throw it on and I don't know I think they could have figured it out better yeah I mean I commend them for trying to be unique you know they could have just gone with normal boring speakers and they didn't it just yeah it kind of threw both of us for a loop because it looks like even like you know just bashed your knee into this lower one in order to give it this like concave look it's interesting um so yeah but uh it's a choice. <laughs> Coming down, you have your basic uh, manual climate controls here, again, in these lower versions of the Celtos. If you go for, again, the EX or SX, then you will have single zone automatic climate control. Uh, so nice that you do have the auto, you know, available if you pay extra for that. Um, beneath there, you will see your first uh, set of cubbies. And so this top one would be a wireless charging pad if you had, again, one of those nicer ones. Here, it's just a normal little extra shelf, but is, uh, you know, kind of nice. Although it's kind of hard plastic, not very rubbery. And so, you know, I feel like stuff might slide out of there. And um, uh, thankfully, though, you do have uh, this other bigger bin down here, which does have a little bit of a texture to it. But again, it's more hard plastic. But anyway, you'll see two US or you'll see two power outlets, one USB jack down there. If you go for higher trims, you get additional USB jacks, one more in the front here. And you also get one in the back. But I think this little pillar on the passenger side is not very well placed, because if I wanted to grab something in there, it would probably be kind of hard to grab something with that there. I don't know why it's there. It's not on the other side. So I don't think it's holding up the car. Right. So I just don't know why it's there. It's another style choice, I guess, that yeah. once again is confusing. Yeah, I, I think they try to give it a more trucky vibe with that, kind of like make it look like a Telluride on the inside with why? something like that. that you not... know? Okay. But I, you know, I think that's just kind of because there's nothing on this other side. So I don't, I don't know. They're just like trying to keep the passenger out of the center cubby or something. <laughs> yeah, it makes no sorry. sense. I'll just use the side compartment. I don't know. Yeah, it's just, it's just another weird choice, you know. It's, it's interesting. I mean, I can grab things over there, yeah, but and if it I just... have the car and drive here, you know, it's a little bit of a wider opening. It's just like why, you know, because like you said, it's not holding anything up. It's not on the driver's side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just interesting quirks of the Celtos. <laughs> Uh, and then beyond that here, you have a little drive mode selector, which looks like it's metal, but that's all plastic. Uh, but it is nice you have drive modes, because that's something you don't often get with other vehicles in this segment. Um, but other storage spaces here, you have pockets in the doors with a bottle holder, which is good, and a good size pocket there. You have your two cup holders, pretty standard, and the center armrest, which does have a little bit of padding to it, but is pretty firm. Uh, but anyway, it's nice that it's, you know, got some nicer material on it and stuff. And you open that up, and you'll see a decent size cubby in there uh, you know you can fit you know a reasonable amount of stuff it's not massive it's not one of the biggest in this segment or anything but I think it is 
pretty good. Moving on to the back seat here in the Seltos, um, it's a pretty good amount of space. So this is where you get a little bit more spaciousness than what you get with the Kia Soul, which is uh, almost seven inches shorter than the Seltos here. And this has actually got a wheelbase that's 1.1 inches longer than the uh, Hyundai Kona. So it's actually a little bit more spacious than a Kona, even though this is very similarly priced to the Kona. And so there's a little bit of a value play there, I think. Uh, you know, you get a little bit more car for your money than the Kona as far as space goes. But anyway, I'm five foot nine, me sitting behind myself. I have about an inch and a half, two inches of spare. It's not super roomy still, but we are in a subcompact crossover, so you can't expect too much. But it is a little more spacious than the Kona was. I mean, I felt like that was a pretty tight back seat. This is a little bit better, I think. Headroom is also pretty good there in the back. You also have a full down center armrest with two cup holders built into it. And it's nice you still have that even in the base trim, because some other base trims of other models get rid of that. So you, it's nice you do keep that. Now, some things you do sacrifice. You still do have pockets in the doors. But when you look forward, there are no air vents or USB jacks. And that's something that even like a Nissan Kicks has USB jacks in the back, um, even in its mid-grade trim and stuff. This doesn't. Now, if you go up to that EX or the SX trim, you do get air vents in the back, and you do get, I think, a single USB jack. So, again, uh, they really decontent these these uh, lower versions to kind of meet those lower price points. Um, and so, like I said, you're going to either have to go for non-turbo, spend about twenty five grand, go for the turbo, and then you're spending, you know, 29000 So those are your choices if you want that nicer interior. Otherwise, though, I mean, this is still fine. I mean, you don't have to get a fully loaded model. And if you're okay with, you know, the base climate controls and everything. I think there's nothing wrong with this interior. It'll be totally fine. The only deal breaker for me that I haven't mentioned yet is the key. The key, you don't have keyless access, keyless entry, or push button start or any of that kind of stuff, um, which is really nice when you get used to it. Ha being, having the ability to leave your key in your pocket at all times, you walk up, grab the door handle and unlock it, not having to fiddle with a key, that alone is worth upgrading, I think, in my opinion, because it really, I haven't used a key in a couple of years because all the vehicles that I, you know, own and use have keyless access now. And going back to a key, it's a first world problem for sure, but it's just something that um, to me would be kind of a bummer that they don't have that in, you know, the base trims. You would think maybe even, you know, these higher trims, you could have that um, and instead they reserve it for just those top trims, which is not ideal in my book. But anyway, otherwise, you know, as far as trunk space in the Seltos here, it's pretty good. So um, again, I think you have a little bit more space than the Kona. So I think they've definitely improved, uh, you know, what they started with, with the basis of the Kona there. And um, now it does look a little shallow, but if you open up that uh, cargo floor there, you'll see a spare tire underneath there and a little gap there where you can actually slide that uh, floor lower and get a couple extra inches of depth out of that cargo space. So uh, the other reason why they have the higher load floor there is so you can have a flat load floor whenever you fold down the rear seats. But if you don't care about having it be totally flat, lower that floor there, you have way more space, and uh, it's nice you have that option, I guess, but I would certainly put it at that lower setting to give you more space. But yes, yeah, so that's all our thoughts here on the interior of the Kia Seltos. Um, like I said, make sure to go watch the driving review I'll link above if you want to hear all our thoughts on how this drives. Uh, overall, it's a, it's a nice uh, little vehicle. It just has some quirky stuff, and uh, you know, it's uh, uh, you have to let us know in the comments below whether or not you guys like all these little quirks, and maybe it's just us, or uh, you know, maybe it's something that all of you find interesting as well. But anyway, thank you guys very much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Take, Take care. care.